Cox Business Television. Information and insights on the Hampton Roads economic picture. Featuring in-depth interviews, profiles, and the latest publisher spotlight from the newsroom at Inside Business. Exclusively for Hampton Roads, Cox Communications presents Cox Business Television. Hello and welcome to CB Television, presented exclusively in Hampton Roads by Cox Communications. This program is designed to bring keen insights to business leaders and decision makers by delivering topical information that will help you lead your organizations in these challenging times. Our goal is to provide you with information from experts on the front line of business issues and topics that are critical to your success. Our job today is to talk about jobs. Economists tell us that we're beginning to see signs of recovery, but decreasing unemployment numbers and job creation are lagging indicators of recovery. So when will local businesses start hiring and, and maybe more importantly, what will those jobs look like? That was the topic of the most recent executive discussion series. The partnership between Cox Business and Inside Business, the Hampton Roads Business Journal. What over 250 leaders heard that morning was that the recession has cost our region somewhere in the neighborhood of 36,000 jobs since 2007, and it might still get worse before it gets better. Joining me now to examine the job landscape and what the future holds for local businesses and job seekers, Dr. Deborah DeCroce. She's the president of Tidewater Community College, a school on the front line in preparing the area for what the post-recession might hold. And Dr. Vinod Argawal, professor of economics from Old Dominion University. Professor, we've been kind of leading and leaving through these uh, challenging times. Is there any one specific market or, or one area of our businesses that you're seeing are actually thriving right now? If you look at uh, the numbers from employment numbers from 2007 to present, what you'll find is almost every sector of the economy during this deep recession has contracted. The only sectors which have been growing are education, healthcare, and the government sectors. Okay. And are you seeing any um, uh, specific growth area on, on any of those three that, that's showing more, um, more momentum you might, as, as already in the recovery phase? Once we begin to recover, and you may have seen this news uh, just last week, in the, mar in the month of March, U.S. economy for the first time in the last three years had the largest gain of jobs in the month, about 162,000. Also, in addition, you also find that some CEOs now, a larger percentage of CEOs are now saying they'll be hiring people mm -hmm. and not contracting. Okay. But the single most important industry which seems to be growing, despite this recession, has been educational health care. Awesome. As the economy begins to recover, we may see some other sectors growing. For example, in Hampton Roads Modeling and Simulation Center, uh, services will probably grow. But education healthcare is the leading okay. industry at this time. Okay. Dr. DeCroce, you've been uh, the recipient of some great news. Uh, congratulations, and you might share with us some of that good news right now. Well, thank you. Yes, we have received some very good news. Uh, we learned uh, the end of last week that we're the recipient of a $16 million federal grant that is specifically focused on addressing a need in the healthcare industry, uh, i.e. Uh, bringing the electronic age, if you will, to medical records. Okay. So we will lead an effort that's a 12-state effort from Maine to Virginia, uh, bringing in and training ultimately some 7,500 workers to support that uh, initiative. Uh, and I think that's a, a good example of really what we're about and uh, maybe what all of us need to look at. And that's, uh, we, we look to the future, we connect the dots of where do we go from here. It's kind of like the, uh, uh, the half full in a glass that's, that uh, of late has looked pretty empty. Well, that's pretty neat. And, and when, in the session, you were talking about curriculums have indeed changed from maybe the way we even saw it 10 years ago, and you've had an incredible uh, run here um, that you're over the last 12 years you're you're seeing a lot of increased enrollment you're seeing the customization you you had talked about curriculum is is different these days could you maybe share us yeah, a little bit it, it much as the world is different uh, the, the back 25 plus years ago when I got into this business you, we, we developed curriculum we never really thought about them having a shelf life today we we build in the factor of a health uh, a shelf life to virtually every program that we're about because we live in a knowledge-based economy and the reality is we all need to be in a constant state of updating. And is there a demographic that's 
typical or has that indeed changed as well with the type of or the age uh, of the students or, or are these folks returning from the workplace? Well, I think we're seeing all the above. I mean, growth is not new for us. You know, we've grown something like 87 percent just since I've been here over the past 12 years. Uh, what is different, though, is what we've seen this year, and that's a growth that approaches 20 percent wow. that is focused on virtually every segment of the population. Uh, to include uh, more of a returning male, that's something we've not seen of late. Uh, in, in age group uh, where there's growth in the 30 plus age group, all of which I think is supporting to the realities of the economy and that half full glass I was alluding to earlier. Okay. Well, that's very exciting. And, and, and Dr. Argawal, is, is the idea of, you know, I, I've seen stats that like 95% of employees across the United States really are in small businesses. Um, is there uh, a way of teaming even with the TCC and others to, to help jumpstart maybe uh, entrepreneurialism or the creation of new type of businesses in our area? Is that one of the ways we might be able to further l link our organizations together? You see, the small businesses are the heart of this economy, any economy. They are the ones who actually push the frontier, so to speak. Right. And they are the ones who are more likely to tell us what they need. Right. So, for example, TCC offers a very good example of changing their curricula to meet the needs. So I would encourage employers to approach educational institutions to see as to what kind of skill set they would like to have their future employees. Okay. For example, in the College of Business, we have a continuing education program where we offer all kinds of educational training. Right. TCC does a marvelous job in actually setting up courses, as, as, as the President said, that there's no shelf life anymore. Right. Well, it seems we like, you know, as we're going through this, and I, I heard it also um, on the panel, education is lifelong learning now. Yes. Uh, whether you're, you know, an executive or whether you're, you know, new and coming right out of uh, college at, at the traditional age, this is now our new reality. So I understand that both of your all's universities are also involved with online learning and um, all different formats to meet the needs of wherever that uh, student may be. Is that how you all are really trying to craft this? Yes, and, and, and I think as well, the, 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 the idea that today we compete best by cooperating. Uh, I think that's as true for business as it is for education, where we look to how might we join forces, how might we leverage each other's strengths to create, create a whole, the likes of which we could create right. independent of each other. I mean, at the end of the day, maybe that'll be the make or break uh, for uh, the Hampton Roads economy. Let me just add something to it. You know, we live in a world where the pace of change has increased. Yes. And both the employers and the employees need to be aware of this that no, there are no such thing called safe jobs. Right. So continuing education and maintaining currency in your field right. becomes absolutely essential. That's great. And even the employers need to understand this, that they need to have a workforce which is trained properly. Yeah, it's right. that, I mean, we've, we've said for years that education, it's that single great act of optimism that yeah. we all have. I mean, that's at the end of the day what it's all about. Well, I know that as a, as a member of the Hampton Roads community, we're blessed to have both of your all's organizations supporting all of us, no matter where we are in our job uh, creation, as well as through our continuum of, of education. And uh, thank you all for your participation today, but thank you for your leadership in our community and, uh, and all that you mean to us. So thank you. Thank you. Still to come on CBTV, more from the front line about workforce development and how best to be prepared for the future. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Productivity has increased 94% in the United States over the last 20 years. But the manufacturing jobs that are in the United States and are growing, and particularly in areas like advanced manufacturing, uh, involve a lot more technology, involve a lot more highly skilled workforce, and they pay much higher.